How's it going, everybody? Jason here, and welcome to a special Tuesday edition of One Take Wednesday, so a weekly show that I try to do and answer some of the more interesting comments on my channel by doing a little short demo to see if I can figure it out, depending on what the comment was. So I'm probably going to keep the show. I'll change the name. I used to do these on Wednesdays and just do them live. So just record them, try to do the demo, and only cut out basically software installs. So just to uh, make it as quick and easy as possible to go through some of those comments. So what I'm gonna do with this one is, this was an interesting comment around uh, a guy who is waiting for his Spark, but mentioned that he only has a phone and there is no desktop app for the Spark. So yes, it is a bit of a pain to navigate just on a phone. So the Spark app, obviously it doesn't have a landscape mode and it's okay when you have the amp kind of uh, in a bigger view here or whatever component that you click on. Um, it's kind of manageable, I guess it's okay, but it is still a lot better on a tablet. But if you don't have access to one, there aren't any desktop apps for it. So. The one thing uh, that is interesting about the Line 6 app and the Line 6 Amplify series is kind of a competitor to the Spark is the sliders that they use is a little bit easier to manage on a mobile device compared to the little knobs on all the devices on the Spark. But what I wanted to do was to see if it's possible to run the mobile apps on a Mac or PC. So I only have a MacBook Pro, so I thought the easiest thing to make this work would be to use the Google Play Store. So the first challenge with that is you need to have a registered Android device in order to do it. I don't, obviously don't have any Android devices, so I looked at emulators. So I tried out two emulators. I tried out Knox and I tried Bluestacks, which were two of the more popular Android emulators there. And basically what it does is when you install those applications, they're both free. Um, it allows you to connect to the Google Play Store. It asks you to log in with your Google account and then it actually registers a device for you. So with the Blue Cat device, it just showed it as this Android 7.1 device, but then I was able to access the store and I was able to access both of the applications. So if I open up the Spark app here, the first thing is the device is a mobile phone, so the interface is still kind of small, but if I switch over to the Amplify remote and I open that up, it actually gives me more of a wider tablet view. So now this is the problem that you run into. So it's fine, the apps can run, but they can't access the Bluetooth connection. So there's no way to actually access your device's hardware through the emulator. So if I wanted to say go into well the amplify doesn't do anything i click on yes for this and it never actually goes to the settings screen but if i go into the spark amp if i want to connect the spark app it is not going to allow me to connect it's going to bring me to a web view here it's going to tell me that bluetooth is turned off and it won't give me a connect option there so if I go in and actually, uh, let's just restart the Spark app here and see what happens. So it's gonna pop this up. Uh, Bluetooth is off, but it doesn't give me a connect option here. And the one time I tried it, it actually did give me a connection. So I can go in and I can connect the hardware. Um, it would go to the emulator device settings for Bluetooth and say you could turn Bluetooth on, but it doesn't actually do anything or connect. So it won't work that way, but it could work with potentially a virtual box or VMware. So depending on how technical you are, that's not something I can go in and demo because I'm not that technically competent to be able to do that. So I'm gonna leave some links in the description below. Hey, if you've got time on your hands, I remember seeing a video where there was a guy who actually created a foot switch pedal with a Raspberry Pi. So odds are there'd be somebody watching this video that would know how to do that. And if you do want to run either of these apps on your device, you might be able to do that with some of the different emulators that are out there. So now moving over to, I guess, the upcoming Mac ecosystem. So the new generation of Macs are going to be built around the M1 processor that is designed by Apple. They are going to release the ability to natively run iOS apps on your Mac. So I've been wanting to upgrade my MacBook for a while because it's 
pretty slow and laggy. I get the little Apple spinny wheel of death more than I would like. And um, I've been holding out to upgrade. So once I get my hands on those, I'm gonna give those a shot. And theoretically, they should allow you to access the Bluetooth device on your computer through those apps if it's running natively. So hopefully that will work out for now, but the best I could find for how to get this to work on your Mac or PC is probably go the virtual machine route by either using VMware or VirtualBox. So a couple of the posts that I read, they're, they're pretty old, they're eight or nine years old, that people had kind of these long stepped guides for how to do it. So you might wanna give those a shot and see if they work. But uh, otherwise, if you've been able to get these apps running through any other type of emulator, leave a comment below. I'll give it a shot on a next video. And then, you know, if you're a Spark user or a Line 6 user and you just have a mobile phone, maybe you can get a better user experience using it on your computer. So like and subscribe, leave a comment, and it might show up on a future episode. Remember, wherever you are in the world, stay safe, wear a mask, and keep on rocking.